Welcome, everybody. We greet you in Jesus' joy, and I'm grateful to the Lord for this day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Amen. And we're grateful to see everybody tonight. Um, I'm grateful to everybody that's joined us on the call, to all of our guests 
that are on the call tonight. We greet you in Jesus' joy to all those who are viewing us live by Facebook. Um, we greet you as well. And I'm grateful to the Lord for you uh, taking the time to connect with us tonight. I want to give a special uh, greeting and shout out to um, Evangelist Ali Santiago and all the saints in El Salvador uh, tonight as um, you've joined us. Um, amen. All the way across the water. Amen. Tonight, um, and we're grateful for the blessing of technology, that technology uh, we are able to um, connect no matter where we are uh, geographically located, um, but we're still able to connect and um, uh, give God glory and praise. So uh, again, as we get ready to get started tonight, <clears throat> um, let's pray. Father, we thank you and we give you praise. We glorify you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy, for your loving kindness, Lord. Thank you for your faithfulness towards us. Your word says morning by morning, new mercy, new grace and favor we see. Thank you, Lord, today that your faithfulness um, towards us, that you loaded us with benefits, that you kept us all throughout this day, uh, that you did not let the desire of the enemy have place over our lives. But we thank you that your will and your word prevailed uh, greatly in our lives um, in this day. And so we thank you that you blessed us to gather around this medium of technology. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you would um, open our ears, that you would um, enlighten the eyes of our understanding, give us a heart um, that is good ground to receive the word of the Lord. And uh, we thank you that as we declare and as we share, uh, thank you for um, the ability and the uh, open door of utterance uh, to declare the word of the Lord, that in all things are said and done tonight, Father, you would get the greatest glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. Can we just take a moment wherever you are and just give God a praise, a celebration? <clears throat> Hallelujah. We give God praise for all that he is, all that he's done, amen, for the victory that we are in even as I speak. To God be all the glory for the great things he has done, amen, and I'm grateful to the Lord, amen, for how the Lord blessed uh, uh, Prophet Nat, Lord, uh, Prophet Nat in the healing, how the Lord in his faithfulness uh, continues to work healing miracles um, in our midst, and uh, we're grateful to the Lord. Uh, so we're going to get into our class tonight. So we're going to continue um, uh, in our class talking about faith. And as I said before, um, this is a, uh, a subject uh, matter that we would never, ever exhaust. Um, we would never, ever arrive at a place where we do not have to um, talk about faith that we do not have to um, study because the Bible says that it is how we live. And the Bible says to just live by faith. And so um, since the, the word says we live by faith, then um, it, it lets us know that it is something that we ought to give the most earnest heed to and um, that we ought to always make sure um, the Bible says that um, that we are in the faith. Um, as we talked about on last week um, or the week before prior, rather, we talked about faith in the sense of um, um, the Bible says all men, all men <clears throat> have been given a measure of faith. And we also talked about how that there are people in the world um, who are utilizing their measure of faith um, but it's in everything except for God. And we said that in order to have the kind of faith that God recognizes, is uh, it has to be rooted in him. And so we talked about the, when we talked about faith, uh, we talked about the definition of faith. Faith, um, the definition, the brief definition we gave was an unwavering trust in God um, and with a, uh, and a, an unwavering trust uh, in God um, and conviction with corresponding action. In other words, um, when we say when we're talking about faith, we're talking about trusting in God 
planting, if you will, our trust, our belief in God. And then as we um, plant that trust, it is unwavering in the sense of we do not take it back. Uh, we plant it in him. We leave our faith and trust in God. And, um, and so therefore, as a result of it, we have this conviction um, uh, about God, who he is, uh, what he has done, who we are in him. And then there is to be a corresponding action that goes along with that. Um, and we talked about it from out of James when James said, um, faith without works is dead being alone. So today I want to kind of pick up, I know we talked about some things on last week in terms of, um, we talked about uh, Job and we uh, gave the illustration of how Job in um, his walk with God, his walk of faith, um, that in everything that Job encountered um, in terms of Satan being able to um, attack Job's life or touch Job's life, I'll say it like that, um, that Job never let go of his trust and his belief in God to the point that um, Satan had to acknowledge uh, that Job had integrity. And so um, we talked about last week how that um, just like with us, we look at what we deal with in the world and, and how things are in the world, that we have to have the same kind of resolve in terms of our trust in the Lord, um, that we, we, we cannot afford to allow any situation that we encounter to make us uh, renounce or take back or give up our faith or our trust in God. The Bible says that Jesus in talking to Peter and the disciples, uh, when he begins to uh, say to the disciples that um, in order for them to come into the, this kind of intimate uh, koinonia fellowship that he's talking about, he said that you have to eat my body, eat my flesh and drink my blood. And when Jesus made that statement, some of the disciples that walked with him said, wow, that's a hard saying. Who, who, who can do that? I'm, and I'm paraphrasing. It's like, well, who, who can do that? And so the Bible says they walked away from Jesus and they did not follow him any longer. So Jesus turns to Peter, to the 12, and he says to them, he says, well, would y'all leave also? And Peter looks at Jesus and said, master, where, where else are we going to go? You're the only one who has the word of life. In other words, we have made the decision that even in the midst of this declaration that you've made and this requirement of this uh, relationship or the type of relationship that you require, even though we don't fully understand everything, we're not, we're not taking back our trust in you. And I want to say that in the base of faith, when we talk about faith, that's the kind of resolve that we're going to have in these days to come <clears throat> um, so that we do not give up. So faith is a supernatural lifestyle that's designed and ordained. I just want to rehearse this. Um, that's designed and ordained to engage, confront, to oppose this natural life or the natural reality, the realities of life, okay? It is how we live in terms of, uh, it's how we have our being. The Bible says in him we live, move, and have our being. It's how we have our being in terms of um, believers, our identity and our purpose and um, our mandate of what we are called to do. It is how we do business in the earth in terms of administration, Operation, demonstration, manifestation, ruling, being fruitful, multiplying, replenishing, subduing, and have dominion. 
okay? And the reason uh, we are to operate that way is because we are ambassadors. We're sons of God. We are representatives of the Most High God. And he is, as we all know, God is the king. And we are of his kingdom. Okay, so since faith is how we live, it is how we operate. It is what we are called to um, in order to demonstrate and to operate as ambassadors in the earth. Um, there is a, 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 a way that uh, we have to operate. And I, I mentioned on last Tuesday that um, Jesus says something to Nicodemus. Um, he told Nicodemus, you must be born again. And he said that if you're not born again, you can't even see the kingdom of God. So um, when we are born again and we learn that we are born again um, out of 1 John chapter 5, uh, verse one says that um, whosoever believes in in Jesus is born of God. So now we know how we become born of God. When we believe in Jesus, we are born of God. And so because we are born of God, then we are called as sons of God, as the offspring of God. We are called to operate in the earth based on where we come from and not based on where we are. That's why I say faith is a supernatural lifestyle that's intended to ordain to confront these current realities and to bring into manifestation what is in heaven because we are born from above. Anybody who accepts Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and believes on Jesus Christ, the Bible says that all who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, then you are born again, <clears throat> which, which it is the birth in the spirit is a higher uh, birth. It's a higher uh, law, if you will. And the reason I say it's a higher law, because in the natural, the law in this natural world is the sense realm, the sense realm, the senses, what you can see, taste, touch, and feel, excuse me, that is the law in the natural world. In the spirit world, it's by faith. The word of God is by faith, and we'll get into that. Um, so does anyone have any questions or any comments? So as a matter of fact, while we're talking, let's just revisit this. Um, let's go to John chapter 17, verse 5, uh, 5 through 11. And if someone can also get for me, um, St. Luke chapter 17, verse 21. I have uh, St. John uh, 17. Um, and uh, what were the verses again? 5 through 11. And this is the NIV. And now, Father, glorify in me, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. I have revealed you to those whom you gave gave me out of the world. They were yours, you gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. To seven. Um, 11, please. 11. For I gave them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you and they believed that you sent, you sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. 
All I have is yours. All you have is mine. And glory has come to me through them. Okay, so here we see Jesus now in his prayer. He's he's praying to God the Father, and he's uh, um, uh, giving a record of his works in the earth, and he's declaring that um, that that he has by his word and by his works um, given it to us. Everyone who believes in Jesus Christ receives the words of God. We receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. We receive the word that he spoke. And when we do that, as Jesus declared, I and my Father are one, I came from you. Jesus is testifying that those who believed on me are just as I am. They come from you. And he says, I pray for them, not for the world. And he says, I've not lost any of them. So the point I want to see here is that there, listen, Jesus prayed this prayer and the word of God will never fail. So when we accept Jesus as Lord and Savior and he is Lord in our life and we have, we received the word of the Lord, as I said in, in John, what Jesus said to Nicodemus, we are born of God. And as we are born of God, we live in a higher place. We live in a higher realm. We live by a higher law. We operate by a completely different system. That's why the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. In other words, walking by faith is who we are and what we do because we are born from above. We come from God because we receive Jesus. We received uh, his word. And so we are born a man uh, uh, of the spirit of God. And so as we are born again, there is a different mode, if you will, and a different way of operation. In the world, we operate by what we can see, what we hear, um, what in the sense realm. But there's another uh, life, there's another kingdom, there's another way and system uh, that overrides, that really rules and and uh, uh, oversees this world. And that's how we got to live in this world. That's how we have to operate in this world. Now, so does someone have a Luke chapter 17, verse 21? I have it, Apostle. Thank you. Um, and it's reading out of the King James. Neither shall they say, lo here or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Okay. So now, as being born of God, being born of God, <clears throat> the kingdom of God is on the inside of us. We're talking about um, all the, the Godhead um, is, is in us. We get filled with the Holy Spirit. And, and as we have the Holy Spirit, we have the fullness of the Godhead. Um, the Bible, there's one scripture that says that the, um, the, uh, the Godhead, fullness of the Godhead dwells bodily in us. <clears throat> and so um, that, is the, that is the Godhead, the king himself, the kingdom that, or that uh, the word kingdom actually means the domain um, um, of the king. Uh, and so we have that on the inside of us. So, so we are mobile ambassadors. The kingdom is mobile, as we we remember in the Old Testament, um, in the in, in terms of a type and shadow. We saw Israel would move with the Ark of the Covenant, that it was in a tent form, which was a temporary form. Um, but it was not the fulfillment of God's plan. The part about it, the tent being mobile was but at that time it was on the outside but the full plan of god was for the ark of the covenant and all that god is to be on the inside of us that's why he said um no more will i write my law on tables of stone but i'm going to write them in your heart and so all that god is the word of the lord is is all of that he is is on the inside of us Okay, and so we are mobile temples of the Lord, 
And so because the kingdom of God is on the inside of us, and remember uh, Jesus' prayer, he says, as you have sent me, I send them. And so we are sent in the world, we come from God. And so everywhere we are, because we, we talked about on, on uh, last Tuesday, how in Acts chapter 17, it is God who ordains the boundaries of every man, where we live at and, and everything. And so we know that um, Psalm 139 talks about that everything that concerns our life, God, even before our parts were formed, God factored it into his book and that there is a road. Psalm 84 verse 17, I believe it is, says that um, happy is the man who trusts in the Lord. His heart is set on pilgrimage, on a pilgrimage, which means that when God releases us into the earth, that there is a journey, there's a sovereign journey, there's a sovereign roadmap called God's purpose and destiny for all of us that we are to walk out, which is why in order for us to begin to walk that out, we can't walk it out until we first establish a relationship with Jesus Christ, okay? And that's intended so that wherever we go, the kingdom of God on the inside of us goes wherever we go, and by the design of God, <clears throat> through faith, it is intended to encounter, to uh, confront, and oppose the current realities of wherever we go or wherever we are, <clears throat> and to take um, territory for the kingdom of God. And we cannot do that apart from faith. Because how many know that when we look at what we see in the world and what we read in the word of God, they are completely different. They are not the same. And so for us to live by faith in this present, uh, live in this present world, the Bible says they that live godly will suffer persecution. Jesus said it like this, you know, marvel not. The world hated, hate, hated me, so it's going to hate you. But that is not a, an excuse to not live godly. Because God's given us what we need to live opposite in this world. God's given us the ability to live opposite. I want to say that again. God has given us the ability to live opposite in this world. To live as, watch this, a contradiction to this world but in affirmation and confirmation with the kingdom of God, all right? So that wherever we go, we take the king and his kingdom um, to those places, atmospheres, and territories that's under the rule and dominion. Um, I'm sorry, to bring, take, bring those places, atmospheres, territories, um, even mindsets, activities, we bring them under the rule and the dominion of the kingdom of God. And it takes faith to accomplish that work. Remember, administrate, to operate, um, to root out, to pull down, all of those things in Jeremiah 1 and 10 says that the word of God does. It takes faith to do that um, uh, because you cannot go by what you see in the natural world. We have to live from where, Remember, I said we have to operate and live from where we are from and not based on where we are. And there are many believers who are living based upon where they are. There are believers who are operating based on where they are, which is why the scripture says in the last days, many people's hearts will fail them. Their heart of faith would fail because they, they are looking at what they see around them in this natural world, and they're giving more priority and more precedence to what they see in the natural world, and they let go um, of, the, uh, the, uh, of faith, okay? So let, let, let me just move on. So when we talk about repentance, because we know that repentance and forgiveness <clears throat> are keys, um, in the kingdom of how we in how we come into or enter into this relationship with Christ. So we know that when we talk about repentance, 
um, that word re, um, that prefix uh, is a, means to return. And this is all part of what I'm talking about being born above. Uh, when, we, when we repent and um, um, we ask Jesus to come into our heart and we make Jesus Lord of our Savior, here's what we're doing. That word repent, that prefix re means to return. And so this is a key strategy that God has given to mankind because when we repent, what happens is it's a strategy um, and it, it's a, a, a system, a, a strategy from the system of God that actually returns us back to who we were in God before sin. Okay, so that's, the, again, that's the whole purpose why Jesus came. To redeem mankind, to, re, to reconcile, to restore us back to God, to a right relationship with God. Okay, um, so we, we, we return back, and this is what we have to always remember. Um, I believe it's 1 Peter, uh, 1 Peter, uh, one, I believe, um, that talks about um, that we have to add to our faith, that we have to, um, uh, as we add to our faith, we have to remember, um, uh, and I'm paraphrasing it, um, where we, who we are, and where we come from, less at any time if we forget, um, we are, um, will be blind. In other words, you know, blind man can't see. Okay. All right. So does anyone have any questions? Any comments? Okay. So let's move on. So faith is sovereign because faith is God. And because it is God, it produces um, the things that pertain to God. It produces the blessing. It pertains, I mean, it produces rather everything that God is, and it produces everything that God de has designed and desired in the earth. And we see this in the prayer that Jesus prayed. He says, listen, when you pray, pray this way, thy, um, uh, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So we see why as ambassadors, why it's important, um, this, this lifestyle of faith is because we are vessels of transfer, that, that we are intended by God to be the conduit through which what God has already done in heaven that is in the realm that cannot be seen uh, to be manifested in this earth realm, this sense realm uh, where it can be seen so that men will glorify um, our works, I mean glorify God rather when they see our good works, when they see what God has done. All right. So through faith, we do not return to or we do not go back to a purposeless existence. But times and seasons are a sign um, to reveal and to unlock our purposes. This is why um, our birth date and the circumstances that surround it. And I don't want to go into all of that, but um, Everything about your birth date, you being born into the earth, the day that you were born, the circumstance that you were born in, because there is a higher purpose over your life that is supposed that God intends uh, to utilize you and I <clears throat> as this vessel to administrate, to dominate, um, and to establish the kingdom of God in. Okay? Okay. Uh, can someone get for me Mark chapter 9, verse 23? And also someone else get for me Luke chapter 1, verse 37. I have Mark 29. You said 23? Mark okay. chapter 9, verse 23. Mark 9, 23 says, Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. 
Thank you. So this is Jesus talking about belief, belief about faith. Again, why faith is a supernatural lifestyle? Because faith is ordained to confront what seems impossible and make it become possible. Let me say it again. I'll trust in God, who he is, what he has done, who we are in him, and what his word says is designed to confront things in the natural that seem impossible. When, when I say impossible, the word impossible means that this is outside of the scope, this is outside of the realm, this is outside of the ability of this natural world. So in, this, in the natural, it can't be done. But faith makes possible what is impossible in this natural realm. So that in this natural realm, we might be uh, experiencing a particular type of reality, a particular reality. And it would appear as though by the system and the natural that this is all that it can be. Faith, which we know is the word of God, and we, we um, and I'm going to show that to you, uh, says that that is not the end of the thing. That there is more. There's something else. Okay. All right. Who has Luke chapter 1, verse 37? I have it, Apostle. Thank you. Um, this is the New King James Version. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Apostle. Okay. Yes. I wanted to um, just say something on that because in reading that word, this, this particular um, chapter was when um, Mary and Elizabeth were, um, when the angel had come and spoke to Mary. And at that particular time, um, I think you and I talked about this before, but Elizabeth, <clears throat> the angel told her was six months pregnant and she had not felt uh, John moving. She had not, um, it wasn't like, uh, it was so obvious that she was six months because she hadn't felt any movement. So when, uh, right after that, Mary says to the, to the angel, may your word be fulfilled and be fulfilled. And so it was by faith that she was heading over to Elizabeth's house. It was by faith that she was receiving those words. And um, it seemed that when she came in agreement with the word, the angel left. But after that, the angel left. And it said she proceeded to go over to Elizabeth's house. So she was moving by faith based on what that what the angel had said to her not on what she knew but she was moving by faith and the witness came when she spoke that that the baby leaked in elizabeth so there was a witness but there first was an agreement and and so i thought about in um walking by faith and living our lives uh and as a faith walk, you got to come in agreement with the word and believe the word that that word is really fulfilled in you, because it would be very easy to um, uh, you hear somebody say something or looking at a circumstance and come in more in agreement with that, because that circumstance can seem more astronomical than than your faith is. But you got to come in agreement with the word of God believing that that word is going to be fulfilled that, and, and uh, that word will come to pass, even though what you see sometimes doesn't amount up to what, it, what um, the word is saying. Coming in agreement with it puts it in a whole nother realm. Amen. And that's a great illustration again, because um, with, um, with Mary, um, it took faith to first of all believe what the angel of the Lord said to her, uh, because what he said to her 
was completely outside of the scope and realm of what was possible in this sense realm because Mary being a virgin had never physically been with a man. And here the angel is giving her this word from heaven um, from a realm that cannot be seen. He's telling her that you are going to have a child. And so of course her first response is based upon where she is where she is in this natural realm. And she says, how can this be being a uh, sense I don't know a man. And so again, remember I said the whole lifestyle of faith, the word of faith, um, the works of faith will always confront a current reality. That is that is the purpose of faith. It is to, to confront a current existing reality. And whenever the word of faith shows up, it is because it is always in that place that God wants to be known. And there's something that God wants to do. So wherever the word of the Lord shows up in our life, that is an uh, um, uh, indication that God is, is intending to work in that place. And that's why it will always be a war because nothing about faith looks like what our current world is because it speaks from a different place. It talks about a different thing. It's, it's gonna produce something different than what we have. And so when two opposites uh, uh, collide, there is not only a confrontation, but there is a conflict. And so Mary is in a place where now she has to uh, believe, first of all, what the angel said. And she, she so that was the first beginning of faith when of, of her receiving it because she believed it. <clears throat> and so remember we talked about a trust, uh, unwavering trust, but there has to be conviction <clears throat> with a corresponding action. And so Mary's corresponding action was, even though I don't know in the natural how this is gonna be, um, my sense realm, my my level of experience, and what I've known heretofore, none none of this um, coins uh, um, a, is able to grab hold to this. So by faith, she says, "Be it done unto me according to your will." And so as she does that. Um, we know the story that um, the Holy Spirit begins to overshadow her because, listen, God is a, not a man. You know, God's not going to force himself because we have to utilize free will and free choice. And so when she when she come into agreement with through faith, here we see something supernatural happening again because the Holy Spirit overshadows her and she becomes pregnant with Jesus. Now, this is a point, um, something the Holy Spirit shared with me uh, some time ago when I was meditating on this particular uh, story about Mary and Elizabeth, um, how that it's important when we talk about the lifestyle of faith, it is never about one person. The Holy Spirit said to me that whenever one individual um, acts in faith, moves in faith, what happens is there will always be another act of faith, another supernatural, supernatural miracle, a work of faith that is going to be manifested. Because the word says that that um, uh, Elizabeth was pregnant with John six months before the angel came to Mary. Then Mary comes to Elizabeth and at the salutation of Mary to Elizabeth, John who was in Elizabeth's womb leaped and was filled with the Holy Ghost. So, so this is my point when I talk about faith, why it's important in this lifestyle of faith. 
why we have to recognize that it's so supernatural that we cannot afford as believers because we are called to this lifestyle. We are called to this work, this supernatural work. It's not of us. The Bible said it's, it's uh, um, not by power, not by might, but it's by the spirit of God. It's God who works in us, causing us to willing to do according to his good pleasure. Because listen, there are other supernatural faith works that are connected to our obedience. There's super, there are other supernatural faith works because it is all designed from heaven. And God wants these things to be done in the earth because this supernatural work of faith, the manifestation of it, is going to begin to operate in territories. It's going to begin to operate in regions. It's going to begin to operate in cultures. It's going to begin to operate in atmospheres so that what God has ordained and designed from heaven will be manifested in the earth for his glory. Jesus needed John to be a forerunner. Hallelujah. So with God, all things are possible. And this is what we can't, we cannot forget this. This has to be a staple for us as believers. With God, all things are possible to them that believe. And, and oftentimes when we read that scripture, we, we skip over that little three-letter word called all. All things are possible. So whenever we're facing and encountering a current reality that is adverse or opposite or ad adversarial to what the word of God says, this is what we have to always remember. With God, Mark 9, 23, all things are possible to them that believe. Whether you're, you're believing for healing, whether you're believing for uh, finances, whether you're believing for somebody's uh, salvation, all things are possible. Your parent, your 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 believing God for your 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 child to be saved. It takes faith. You know? Do you know when 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 parents get pregnant with a baby? It takes faith to trust God for the health of the baby while the baby's still in the womb. It takes faith to trust God for the birth of the baby, that the baby is going to be born, that everything is going to be well. And if by chance things are not well or things happen, and we know sometimes we do encounter situations in birthing that um, there are, are challenges that show up in times of birthing, we still can operate in faith according to Mark 9.23 and Luke 1.37 to believe beyond what our sense realm is telling us to refuse to accept what the enemy is saying is all we can have. This is it and nothing can change. But we have to remember what whosoever believeth on Jesus Christ is born of God. As the offspring, eschatia, hallelujah, hallelujah. As the offspring of God, and I've already gotten ahead of myself, um, but amen, it's well. As the offspring of God, God has given us the ability to operate in the earth, amen, as him. The Bible says, the scripture says, as he is, so are we in this world. And Jesus also said it to confirm it and to bring agreement to that word. He said to the disciples, the works that I do, you going to do these same works. And greater, not that Jesus was saying we were going to do anything greater than him. He was only talking about greater in terms of numbers, because we talking about a whole body all over the world doing the works of Jesus. Hallelujah. And so uh, when we talk about this lifestyle of faith, listen, saints, um, what we're talking about is a trust in God and remember um, I gave the scripture in Galatians chapter 2 and 20, and, and it talks about um, um, this life that I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. What we're actually talking about, when we're talking about when we trust in the Lord, here is Jesus and here is us. 
when we trust in the Lord, we put our faith and trust in him, there is a merging into him. Remember, Jesus said in John 17, my prayer is that they be one as we are one. So when we put our trust and faith in him, we become one. And Galatians 2 and 20 says that, that once we become one, it is no longer our faith that is, is operating. It is Jesus's faith. So we have access because it did any of us get up on the cross? Did any of us resurrect ourselves from the grave? Jesus did. And the Bible says that when Jesus ascended up, when he got up out of the grave, resurrected out of the grave, so did we. We found this in Ephesians chapter two. We did too. And, and he ascended up on high. He's seated at the right hand of God the Father right now. And Ephesians 2 says that we are seated together with him in Christ Jesus, in him. So that everything Jesus accomplished by his faith, when we put our trust in him, we become one with him. That's why he says in Mark 9, 23, all things are possible to them that believe. With God, nothing shall be impossible because Jesus already overcame. Remember John 16, 33, Jesus said to the disciples, these words have I spoken to you that this word, as I spoke this word of faith to you, as you receive them, as you receive my word, you receive me and my words and you receiving me brought you into me that we are now one. In me, you have peace. In the world, you have tribulation. And so we're called to live this lifestyle of faith and I'm, our time is, is gone. We're called to live this lifestyle of faith there um, a lot. Um, amen. There's a lot to it, but there's this lifestyle of faith. And I just want to um, just encourage all of us um, in the days and times that we're living in. Matthew chapter 24 talks about when the disciples asked Jesus, what would be the signs of the end times? And he talked about offenses would come. He talked about the spirit of deception. He talked about wars and rumors of war. Basically uh, about chaos and confusion. We see it in our world today. Hatred, violence, murder, deception, lies. We see all of these things that are resident and representative of the kingdom of dark, darkness, the opposite kingdom. And so we are of the kingdom of light. We've been called to live opposite of this so that we are, the Bible says, you are the, the light of the world and you are the salt of the earth. And so faith in us, the supernatural life of faith, because faith is God working in us, causing us to willing to do according to his good pleasure. It's supposed to go everywhere we go in our day-to-day -day, uh, life. And the kingdom of God is, is supposed to be demonstrated to show a difference. So when we talk about faith, we know uh, the Bible says faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So we know that the word of God is faith. We know Jesus is the word. Because John chapter one says, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God, <clears throat> and the word was in the beginning. There was nothing made um, without him, that God made everything uh, by his word. And so we know that the word is God, that God is his word, and if faith come by hearing, hearing by the word, then we understand that it comes by God. When we put our trust in him, then the faith of Jesus Christ um, comes to us. And what, what that does is, remember I said, every man has been given a measure of faith. So what happens literally is when we trust the Lord, we believe in God, faith comes by hearing. What actually happens is the word of God actually activates what's in us, okay? It actually activates what's in us. See, there's a, Jesus said it like this. Um, well, let me let me first say this. 
So it's one thing to believe, but it's a whole nother thing to know. Jesus said it like this in one, one scripture. He said um, to them that because you believe, he said, well, you've done well, but the devil believes. But there is no corresponding action. So when we believe, and here is how we actually begin, when we believe, um, God said to Joshua, he says, this book of the law um, shall not depart out of your mouth, that you will meditate in it day and night, that you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. So when we talk about faith coming and having faith and operating in faith, we're talking about taking the word of God and we know, um, and we could talk about how that, you know, in, in any given situation, whatever situation you and I might be encountering in the moment, there is a word of God that is related to that particular uh, circumstance or situation. And what we do is we take the word of God that relates to that circumstance, uh, you know, uh, and whatever it might be, uh, whether it's healing, whether it's salvation, as I said, whether you're looking for a way, a wisdom, <clears throat> wisdom of God for decision making, um, all of that's found in the word. And we meditate on the word. The more you meditate on it, you mutter it, you're muttering, you're muttering, you're muttering the word. Just In other words, you're, you're saying the word over and over and over again, meditating on it. What happens is the word of God will begin to quicken you. It will begin to come alive in you and you will move from believing mentally, just mentally believing and agreeing that the word is true into a place of knowing. And it brings you to a place of having this deep conviction in your heart to know that even though I don't see, for instance, uh, the Bible says of the Hebrew, uh, Hebrew boys that when they were standing before the king and they said to the king, we're not careful to answer you because we know that God is going to deliver us. And then they says, if he doesn't, we're still not going to take down our declaration and confession and, and we're not going to stop believing. He said, even if he doesn't, we know that he's able because there was a deep conviction in them <clears throat> that they knew um, the power of God. So as a result of it, their corresponding action was not to bow, not to give in to what the king wanted. And of course, we know the story. They were put in the fiery furnace. But 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 when they were put in the furnace, um, the affirmation and the confirmation of who they are in God and the power of God, God did deliver. But God needed to deliver them in the way of them going into the fiery furnace because the furnace was what the king had confidence in. And God needed to show the king that the, what he had confidence in still had no power over the power of God. And I say that because sometimes we we believe God, we trust God for uh, in a certain uh, time or a, a situation of adversity. But we're trusting God because we want a certain outcome. And if we don't see that particular outcome, then the enemy comes to try to sow a fear, doubt, and unbelief to make us take back our trust in God. When in, when in all truth, while we were looking for God to come one way, God ha has already set up to come a whole different way because he knows what's going to show our enemy his power and he's still going to deliver amen so um that's that's my time tonight thank you for yours uh does anyone have any questions or comments apostle when you were talking about um uh, uh faith makes all things possible to the, them who believe I thought about the centurion soldier, the centurion who, whose servant was sick. And he was not a man of God. He was not a Jew. He was not 
uh, following Christ, but he had known enough of what Jesus did and knew that Jesus could heal him, could heal because he had seen some things go, you know, seeing Jesus do some things as he was going around and uh, healing and delivering people. And he believed, he had enough faith to believe that Jesus could heal his servant without even touching him and without even going to where he was. He sent his servants, his elders to go to him to bring Jesus to his home. But he met Jesus on the way and told Jesus, I'm not even worthy of you to even come into my home. But if you just send the word, I know my servant will be healed. And Jesus's response was not even to him, but Jesus turned around, and looked to the people, to the disciples and, and others who were following him and said, not in all of Israel had I seen in this kind of faith. And Jesus never said, go, your servant is healed. Jesus didn't, the Bible didn't tell us that Jesus spoke any word to the servant who was sick. He just talked about the faith of the centurion. And when the ones that the centurion had sent to go get Jesus and bring him went back to the centurion's house, they found that the servant had been healed. And Jesus, you know, when we think about the type of faith that it takes to say, you don't even have to come here, just say the word and I know it's going to be done. And Jesus not even address it directly, but it still happened is the kind of faith that and, and maturity in faith that we have to grow into. Jesus just, just I, I know you can do it. I, and that's it. That's it. Jesus, I know you can. And that's all to it. Amen. And so we see in that, that's a great illustration. That was one of the um, ones when, um, uh, when I was going to talk about some exploits of faith. Um, like you said, uh, Jesus himself testified of this centurion that he had not seen this kind of faith in Israel. That he, um, this centurion, understood the principle. He understood the principle and the order. He says, I am a man in authority, under authority. And I understand how this works, that, that when you're in a position and place of authority, there is a power and authority that's given to you that you can say something and those who are assigned to serve will obey what you said. And I, I understand that. And so you don't even have to come physically to my house. If you just send the word, and you're right, Jesus said to the centurion, he said, you go, your servant is healed. And they came back and told when he, when the servant got home, a centurion rather got home. He said, well, when, what hour did he get healed? And it was the same time that Jesus said, go home, your servant is healed. He said, send the word. And so that was one of my points in terms of how we release faith, just like Mary did, be it done unto me according to thy will. And so when we, re we release faith, because um, in him, we speak from um, in Christ. And so we, we release faith by our declaration out of the mouth um, when you, you confess it. Um, he, he said, um, I believe that if you just say the word, my servant is, he, he'll be healed. Just send your word. Send your word. And that was a great point you brought out because he sent the word to the centurion. He said, go home, your servant is healed. So the centurion becomes a conduit of faith for his servant to be healed. And so we release it by the declaration of our, my, our mouth. Romans 4, 17 says that um, uh, for that we speak those things that be not as though they were. If we're in God, Isaiah 46 says, verse 9 and 10, that God spoke the beginning, uh, spoke the end from the beginning. Because God operated in faith. Everything that we see now, he spoke the end of the thing from the beginning. I mean, spoke the, uh, yes, the end of the thing from the beginning. Hallelujah. 
So we can, we have the power through God to do this. So um, does anyone else, great point, um, Evangelist, thank you. Uh, does anyone else have any comments? Um, yes, Apostle, I have, uh, I have a question. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, can you hear me, Apostle? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, okay. All right, yeah, so my one question is, um, when it comes to having faith, um, because um, I experienced some things like this, when when having faith, does it come with, I would say, a certain characteristic that one has to have? Like, for example, you have people who say, you know, they believe in God and, you know, they're believing for this, but, you know, they're not necessarily living right or, you know, I guess being, you know, a, a good Christian, but yet they are having, you know, such huge faith for the Lord to do certain things. So my question would be, does that necessarily, your, does your characteristics contradict your faith? You know, so if I have such huge faith, but, you know, I'm not necessarily living correctly, you know what I mean? Does that contradict, you know, the faith? Like, will God still deliver on his end? But, you know what I mean? You're not, I guess, meeting the expectations of living, you know, Right yeah, I, I think I, I think I know what what you're getting at. So there is there is a life uh, of holiness. The Bible says, "Be holy, as I am holy." So there is a lifestyle requirement that God requires to be holy, as as I am holy. Now, there are times when when um, um, and I and I I think what your your the example that you're giving is a person who's saying they believe God, but they live in opposite. They don't, their lifestyle doesn't match what they say. So in that regard, no. Um, uh, but as a believer in Jesus Christ, because see, you can't, you can't expect God to bless and you, you deny, you're living your lifestyle is basically in a, a contradiction to the word of God. Okay. God reigns on the just as well as the unjust. So they so the goodness of God um, works for everybody in terms of uh, the people who don't you don't get what they they should deserve. But in the household of faith, there are special blessings that God will hear when you pray, when you believe the word of God, because you can't you can't believe for the word of God and then live opposite of the word of God. Does that make sense? Because it's a contradiction. So you got you have to live. There's a certain lifestyle that goes along with faith and believing God. Because if you really, if you really believe God, you really trust God, your lifestyle is going to reflect your trust and belief in him. That's, that's, that's somebody who wants, um, want what they want from God, but still want to live how they want to live. It's, it doesn't work like that. So, um, so I, I pray that's that's clear and answer your question. But uh, yes, so on the one hand, yes, if you're saying that you're a believer, that you trust God, you're believing God, um, then the Bible says when you pray and you ask in faith that you will be, you will receive, um, believe that you receive it and you have what you say. Okay. So. So, but there is a lifestyle that goes along um, with that. And I wanna say too that, that in terms of, okay. So the Holy Spirit just brought something else to my mind. So the Bible says there are There are people who do name the name of the Lord, but 
their life does not reflect it. Let me let me further go here because the Holy Spirit just dropped this in my spirit. So, okay, the gifts and callings without repentance. There are people who claim to serve God, but in actuality, while they started out serving God, they did not maintain a life that was um, uh, holy unto the Lord. And this is the reason why there's some people in the world <clears throat> that have been turned off by church or been turned off by um, represent, representation um, that has been uh, in the name of the Lord because they've heard, you know, just hearing what people say, but then seeing what they do, what they do and say don't line up. The Bible says that there's coming a day that those individuals will stand before God. And they're going to say, well, I did many wonderful works in your name. And God's going to say to them that um, I don't know you. Depart from me. So they are, so to kind of break it, I guess to make it more clear, there are people who are not living for God, but, but, but uh, they want the blessings and favor of God. It don't work that, like that. Then there's a group of people who have started out working with God and along the way they have gotten away from it and now they're living according to their own way and God was still because the gift of God comes from God and so people will get saved but the individual themselves will be lost because they did not maintain a life that was right before God that's why the scripture says that they will come before him and they say, well, I did all these great things in your name. Yes, because it wasn't you. It was my name and it was my gift that was doing the work. But you, the vessel that was charged with stewarding my gift and my word, you did not maintain a life of righteousness before me. And so I don't receive you. Okay, and then there are those, like I said, when you live for, when you're living for God, you're doing all you know to do to live right before God. It is a growing process because there are people who uh, sometimes feel like they don't have faith. Well, you do have faith. You just have to, you have to utilize it. You have to cultivate it just like a baby. You know, when a baby comes out the womb, it has to grow up um, to maturity, but it grow up through constant activity. Amen. Does anybody else have any comments or questions? Did that answer your question? Just Ronnie? Yes. Yeah, so you can't, you can't, you can't just decide you're going to live for God um, um, any kind, your way. He said, there's only one way. Jesus said, I'm the door. I'm the way, the truth and the life. There's only one way. And you can't come to God to get what he has, but then live how you want to live. That's not how that works. And, um, you know, sadly, there is, um, that is a, um, there are things like that happening. There are those who um, have presented, I'll say, um, a poor witness in the world but every man will have to stand before god and give an account for the words and the deeds that's done in this life every man and so what what happens consequently is sometimes people looking at at looking from the outside and when they don't see um what what seems like an immediate response from god um to this um, the enemy can can deceive them into thinking that they're getting away with it, nothing's being done. But remember, the Bible says that um, that God is long suffering, that He always gives every individual a time 
to get things right with him. So the best advice is no matter what you see, who's walking or not walking, you, you take it personal to yourself that you walk before the Lord and make sure that your life is in right standing. As the Bible says, um, to examine yourself to make sure that you're in the faith. Amen. And so again, that's all a part of uh, when we talk about the true life of faith, um, the trust in the Lord and the word of God and all that, that pertains to um, our God and his kingdom, why it is a, a supernatural lifestyle because we are required <clears throat> and, a, and a, uh, empowered to live in the world in the midst of all of that. To not allow ourselves to be um, contaminated by the world system or how you see um, other things being done in the world, but that we keep our eyes on Jesus. And then we live from that viewpoint and um, from that position of being in Christ. Amen. Does anyone else have any questions, comments? Amen. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining. Um, and I just decree tonight as we get ready to take our leave, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Have a great night. God bless you. against my family